Good afternoon, my dear students, and today we continue to talk about hematology topics in our lecture course. So today's topic is lymphoma and multiple myeloma, and let's start. Lymphomas are malignant disorders of lymphoid tissue subdivided into two broad groups, Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Lymphoma arise in lymph nodes or in other lymphoid tissue of the body. They are widely different clinical presentation and clinical course ranging from indolent or low-grade types, which may not need treatment for many years, if at all to aggressive high-grade disease, which can, without appropriate treatment, cause deaths in a few weeks of presentation. The major subdivision of lymphomas is into Hodgkin lymphoma and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and this is based on the histological presence of a Reed Stenberg cell in case of the Hodgkin lymphoma. The non-Hodgkin lymphomas are further subdivided into B-cell diseases, uh, which happens in 85% of cases, and T-cell diseases, which takes around 15% of cases, and each of these groups contains many different types of lymphomas. So our first uh, part of this lecture will be, we will talk about Hodgkin lymphomas. Firstly, Hodgkin lymphoma was uh, uh, described by Thomas Hodgkin, curator of the Anatomy Museum at Gaze Hospital in London, and disease was described in uh, 1832 following his account of affected lymph glands in the post-mortem cases titled on some morbid appearances of the absorbent glands and spleen. Dorothy Reed and Carl Stenberg then were the pathologists who identified the abnormal cell that defines the subtype of lymphoma in 1898. Interestingly, neither Stenberg nor Reed felt that this disorder represented a neoplasm. Stenberg believed that it was a variant of tuberculosis, whereas Reed felt it to be an independent entity of inflammatory origin. Hodgkin lymphoma is potentially curable lymphoma with distinct histology, biological behavior, and clinical characteristics. Most often, it affected young adults aged from 20 to 40 years old. A second incidence peak is seen in individuals aged 55 and older. Slightly more men than women are diagnosed with Hodgkin lymphomas. Pathological diagnosis should be made according to the World Health Organization classification from a sufficiently large surgical specimen or excisional lymph node biopsy to provide enough material for fresh, frozen, or formerly fixed samples. Prognosis is largely determined by the stage of the disease, and common clinical presentations are palpable lymphadenopathy and constitutional symptoms. Under the term of Hodgkin lymphoma are recognized two clinically and biologically different entities, classical Hodgkin lymphoma, of which there are four histological types, and non-classical Hodgkin lymphoma, which include the entirety of lymphocyte-predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. Classical Hodgkin lymphoma includes four classes, it's nodular sclerosis, mixed cellularity, lymphocyte-depleted, and lymphocyte-rich type of lymphomas. The cause of Hodgkin lymphoma remains unclear and is not associated with exposure to radiation, chemicals, biocidal agents, or in the healthcare-related professions or previous lethal The leading suspect remains the Epstein Barr virus, based on much suggested evidence but no definitive proof. This virus is a large belymphocytropic herpes virus. Approximately 90% of the general population acquires infection of this virus by early adulthood. Antibodies to the viral capsid antigen reach high levels in patients with Hodgkin lymphoma that in controls, and these high levels appear several years before the neoplasm. Hodgkin rich Stenberg cells in approximately 50% of cases of Hodgkin lymphoma contain Epstein Barr virus and call it small RNA. Circumstantial evidence for a genetic contribution to the etiology of Hodgkin lymphoma comes from studies showing that Hodgkin lymphoma is almost 100 fold more likely to develop in the monozygotic twin of affected individual than in dizygotic twin. 
First degree relative individuals with the disease have to up fivefold increased risk for development of lymphoma. It is believed that Hodgkin Norit-Benstenberg cells are derived in the germinal center and they that they uh, have glomerular ranged by crippled immunoglobulin levels, or uh, another name of it, and febrile mutation, which lead them to inhibit of apoptosis and lead to systemic lymphoma disease. The cells have lost their capacity to express a high affinity B cell receptor and escape negative selection. Several abruptly activated signaling pathways and transcriptional factors have been identified that contribute to the rescue uh, written by rich Stenberg cells from apoptosis. Epstein Barr virus is linked to the development of Hodgkin lymphoma because it's believed that it possesses a transforming ability that leads to NFK activation of antigen activated B cells. In contrast, in not only lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, the diagnostic cells are lymphocytes and histiocytes. Analysis of these cases showed colonial immunoglobulin gene rearrangement with ongoing mutations. The receptor of the highly mutated gene lost affinity to the antigen and undergo apoptosis. Instead of further differentiation into memory cells and plasma cells, the lymphocyte and histiocyte cells resist this process and manage to survive. Hodgkin lymphoma is usually manifested as lymphadenopathy, typically in the cervical, axillary, or medicinal areas, and only about 10% of the time as nodal disease before, below the diaphragm. Approximately 25 to 30 of patients with Hodgkin lymphoma have constitutional symptoms, the classic P symptom, significant weight loss, night sweets, and persistent fever usually signal widespread or local extensive disease and imply a need of systemic treatment. Generalized puritis, occasionally severe, can antedate the diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma by up to several years. Some patients have symptoms suggestive of growing mass lesion, such as calf or stridor, as a result of tracheal bronchial compression from the medicinal mass, or bone pain secondary to metastatic involvement. Because Hodgkin lymphoma can involve the bone marrow extensively, an occasional, pa occasional patient has symptomatic anemia or incidentally noted pancytopenia. Paraneoplastic neurological or endocrine symptoms are rare. Peripherally located nodes seldom reach large size. Very large medicinal masses or less often retroperitoneal masses can develop with only modest symptom. Lymph node involvement in Hodgkin lymphoma is usually painless, but an occasional patient notes discomfort in involved nodal sites immediately after drinking of alcohol, but uh, there is no theory proved why this pain is appear. Medicinal lymph nodes involvement may be associated uh, with pleural effusion or superior vena cava obstruction. The medical history, including the presence of B symptoms, uh, they are fever, drenching nine sweets, unexplained weight loss more than 20% of total body weight for six months, and other disease related symptoms such as fatigue, pruritus, and alcohol induced pain, as well as the result of physical examination, should be recorded. Chest X ray and contrast and haste computer tomography scan of the neck, chest, and abdomen are mandatory. In addition, the baseline positron emission tomography should be carried out according to the recommendation for staging and response assessment in lymphoma whenever the diagnostic tool is available. Bone marrow biopsy should be carried out if PET scan is not available. Full blood count, retrocyte sedimentation rate, and blood chemistry, including C reactive protein, alkaline phosphatase, lactate de dehydrogenase, liver enzymes, and albumin are obligatory. Screening for hepatitis B, C, and human immunodeficiency virus is compulsory. Staging is carried out according to the Ann Arbor classification in consideration of defined clinical risk factors. After completion of staging, patients are allocated to the three treatment categories, limited, under, inter, intermediated, I'm sorry, and advanced stages. 
cost fault modification of the Ann Arbor staging system categorized patients into four stages. The first three decades expanding lymph extent of lymph node disease. So stage one is the involvement of the single nodal area, stage two, two or more nodal areas, but still on the one side of the diaphragm, stage three, nodal disease on both sides of the diaphragm, the spleen and lymphoid tissue of the Walder ring each count as a nodal sites in this system. Stage four is reserved for extra nodal disease, uh, which of all practical purposes is disease of the bone marrow, lung, bone, or liver. Hodgkin lymphoma at any other extranodal site should prompt question of the diagnosis or search for HIV infection. The stage number in all cases is followed by the letter A or B, indicating the absence A or presence B of one or more of the following. An explained fever above 38 degrees of Celsius, night sweets, loss of more than 10% of body weight within the six months. Localized external extension from a mass of nodes does not advance the stage, but it's indicated by the script E. Thus, medicinal disease with contiguous spread uh, to the lung or spinal tecca would be classified as IE. As in moment of the spleen is often a prelude to widespread hematogenous spread of the disease, patients with lymph node and splenic involvement are stage S3S. Bulky disease, uh, which is the widening of the mediastin by more than one third, or the presence of the nodal mass more than 10 centimeters in diameter is relevant to the therapy of any stage. There is a classical Hodgkin lymphoma presentation in uh, previous years before the treatment was actually described and you can see the pack of enlarged lymph nodes uh, as for the one side of the diaphragm and on the different sides of the diaphragm with uh, presenting the different stages of this disease. The diagnosis is made by histological examination of an excised lymph node. Fine needle aspiration biopsy is not adequate for the diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma. Open biopsy and the standard histochemical staining are required to establish the diagnosis and to determine the histological subtype. The distinctive multinucleate polyptoid rich Stenberg cell is the central to the diagnosis of the four classical types, and monoclear Hodgkin limb cells are also part of the malignant clone. This cell stain with cluster 30 and cluster differentiation of 15, but are usually negative for B cell antigen expression. Inflammatory components consist of lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, plasma cells, and variable fibrosis. Hodgkin lymphoma can typically be classified into one of the five well-described subtypes. Another one histological example of findings uh, which allows to make diagnosis. In this slide, you can see classical rich Stenberg cell, lacunar cells, which usually present in case of the nodal sclerosis type, and popcorn cells, which usually represent the lymphocytes predominant type. Diagnostic rich Stenberg cells, and, uh, which are present in case of the classical uh, Hodgkin lymphomas, uh, are the large cells in diameter or more than 50 millimeters, even with abundant, weakly acidophilic or amphophilic cytoplasm, which may appear homogeneous or granular and lacks the pale zone in the Golgi area. The nuclear is blobbed or polylobed. The nuclear membrane is thick and sharply defined as nuclear pattern is usually vesicular, but with some coarse chromatin clubs scattering through. And there is a large, variously shaped, but usually rounded, um, highly acidophilic central inclusion. like nucleolus rendered by the clear hollow. When the two lobes face each other, all eye appearance results. 
cells uh, with the set of the futures but lacking nuclear liberation are referred to as a mononuclear variant of Ringsteinberg cells or H cells, means Hodgkin cells. Nodular sclerosis is the commonest histological subtype and is characterized by bands of fibrosis that enclose nodules of lymphoid tissue containing variable numbers of Hodgkin cells. The disease affects primary young adult and is less often observed in elderly. This subtype is distinguished by the presence of collagenous bands that divide the lymph nodes into nodules, which often contain uh, rich Tenberg cells, variant called the lacunar cells. Some pathologists subdivide nodular sclerosis into two subgroups for, uh, on the basis of the number of rich Tenberg cells present. Transforming growth factor uh, beta may be responsible for the fibrosis in the nodular sclerosis Hodgkin lymphoma subtype. Mixed cellularity Hodgkin lymphoma is more common in young children than in adolescent or adults. Mixed cellularity is characterized by the presence of heterogeneous mixture of lymphocytes, eosinophils, neutrophils, plasma cells, epithelial cells, and Hodgkin cells. Richtenberg cells are frequent in the background of abundant normal reactive cells. Interleukin-5 may be responsible for the xenophilia in mixed cellularity Hodgkin lymphoma. This subtype can be confused with non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Lymphocyte depleted Hodgkin lymphoma is a rare form and is characterized by a low number of lymphocytes, by the absence of fibrosis bands, and by the numerous, sometimes anaplastic, Hodgkin Richtenberg cells. Lymphocytes reach uh, cl classical Hodgkin lymphoma may have a nodular appearance, but immunotyping analysis allows, allows the distinction between this form of Hodgkin lymphoma and nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma. The pattern uh, in LDHL is diffuse and often appear hypocellular due to the presence of fibrosis, necrosis, and positive inflammatory cells. A large number of classical rich Spanberg cells are present with these bizarre pleomorphic sarcomatous variants. Approximately 70% of patients present at an advanced stage and almost 80% have B symptoms. Lymphocyte depleted Hodgkin lymphoma is rare in children. It's a common uh, in adult patients with human immunodeficiency virus. This subtype is characterized by the presence of numerous large, bizarre malignant cells, many rich Tenberg cells, and few lymphocytes. Diffuse fibrosis and necrosis are common. Many cases previously diagnosed as lymphocyte depleted Hodgkin lymphoma are now recognized as diffuse large B cell lymphoma, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, or nodular sclerosis classical Hodgkin lymphoma with lymphocyte depletion. The diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma is primarily based on the recognition of the typical tumor cells, either uh, HRA cells or LP cells, and in the inappropriate environment. The immunophenotype of the neoplastic cells in Hodgkin lymphoma can help identify the specific subtype. Typically, the Hodgkin rich Stenberg cells uh, contain positively for CD30. However, often only a minority of the malignant cells stain positively for CD15 and BCAAP marker. Nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma almost always stains strongly positive for CD20. Lymphocyte rich classical uh, Hodgkin lymphoma cells express CD15 and CD30, while nodal lymphocyte predominant uh, Hodgkin lymphoma almost never express CD15. T cell rich B cell lymphoma can be very difficult to distinguish from nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma because both are negative for CD30 and CD15, but positive for CD45. Nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma is the most common in males younger than 18 years. Patients with nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma generally present with localized uh, non bulky disease that infrequently involves the mediastinum. Almost all patients are asymptomatic. Uh, this type of lymphoma is characterized by molecular and immunophenotypic evidence of B lineage differentiation with the following distinctive features. 
It's a large cell with multi-lobed nuclear referred as to popcorn cells. Uh, this type of lymphoma can be difficult to distinguish from progressive transformation of the germinal centers and uh, T cell rich B cell lymphoma. Reliable discrimination from non Hodgkin lymphoma is problematic in diffuse subtypes with lymphocytic and histiocytic cells set against a diffuse background of reactive T cells. Chemotherapy and radiational therapy produced excellent long-term progression-free survival and overall survival in this patient. Uh, if we uh, comprise these two types of lymphoma, we will see that classical type is the most part of patients of Hodgkin lymphoma. In this case, can be found only a rich Richtenberg cell. However, nodular lymphocyte predominant type is more rare. It's so-called uh, popcorn cell is unique to kind of this lymphoma type. This patient has a very good prognosis, but disease can relapse after 10 years and require another course of the treatment. On this slide, you can see 5 cm lymph node without obviously from a patient with lymphadenopathy. Uh, the node should normally be soft and pink and less than one centimeter in size. And this lymph node is involved in Hodgkin disease. So with this gross appearance could pass for non-Hodgkin lymphoma as well. Uh, here you will see the group of uh, medicinal nodes. Note that antrarachotic uh, pigment in some Notes you can see the specimen measuring 20 centimeters and the greatest dimension, and this liver is involved in the Hodgkin disease. So you can see the structural changes and uh, absence of hom homogeneous structure. Uh, st uh, staging uh, of Hodgkin lymphoma disease evaluation uh, for staging essential uh, pathological documentation uh, by hemopathology, physical examination, data documentation of the B symptoms, data of laboratory evaluation and imaging studies, and in, in some cases, bone marrow aspiration or bilateral biopsy of the lymph nodes. Uh, under certain circumstances, liver biopsy, gallium scan, bone radiography, or MRI, uh, even uh, staging laboratory is used to prove or disapprove diagnosis of Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, non essential but useful can be cell surface marker phenotypic analysis and gene rearrangement analysis. CT scanning of the thorax, abdomen, and the pelvis is performed for initial staging purposes. Uh, compared with the other uh, methods, CT is more sensitive for detecting lymphadenopathy and extra lymphatic involvement. CT scanning may be most useful for evaluating patients with lymphoma because it can de deposit the lymph nodes in the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Benign anterior medicinal masses are typically depicted on the CT as well martinated, lobulated, encapsulated, mixed solid, or and cystic masses. Cystic areas are often multivocular and thinly separated. They are found in up to 88% of, of cases. The cystic areas can be seen on this part of the slide. Bulky disease, as we already talked, it's enlargement of mediastinum diameter more than 10 cm or more than 33 uh, of the chest diameter on X-ray. Patients with bulky disease in medicinal uh, masses often present with symptoms of superior vena cava syndrome. Uh, this 23-year-old female uh, with CT scan presented on the slide have left in renal antidepathy was referred for gallium scan. Abdominal and pelvic CT scans were subsequently performed and selected images from the gallium scan demonstrated a normal uptake of the left renal region and the left side of the pelvis. Uh, the CT scan demonstrates heterogeneous masses of these regions consistent with lymphadenopathy. In addition, there are multiple low attentional lesions of the spleen indicated by the, this mark. By arrows. Uh, 
A lymphoma uh, angiogram is conducted by injecting a radio opaque liquid dye into the lymph system through the feet. The fluid travels through the lymph system and remains visible by X-ray. Abdominal lymphogenogram X-ray of the patient with Hodgkin lymphoma showing the organization of lymph nodes in the pelvis and in the back of abdomen. Positron emission tomography using uh, in, uh, in observation of patients with Hodgkin lymphoma has already been validated to assess patients with different types of malignant tumors, including lymphomas. The principle of the imagining test is based on the metabolic changes that reflects fundamental differences in the central metabolic pathways in malignant tissue. Because of those changes, tumor cells produce lactate at high levels compared to non-malignant tissue, even in the presence of oxygen, a phenomenon termed anaerobic glycolysis or the Warburg effect. Uh, this imagining relies on the principles to detect foci or tumor proliferation. And on the picture, you can see the presence of nodes involved in the process. And here they are to clearly seen. Factors predicted in a poor prognosis are advanced stage, best symptoms, increasing tumor bulk. Uh, increased site of disease, advanced age, external disease, or response to chemotherapy, early relapse, elevated retrocytes limitation rate, lymphopenia, anemia. Therapeutic argument for newly diagnosed lymphoma includes treatment with, uh, with radiotherapy, chemotherapy, or combination of both. After completion of the staging, patients are allocated to the three, three treatment categories, limited stages, intermediate stage, and advanced stage. The response to treatment can be monitored by CT and uh, PET scans. According to the stage, there can be from two to eight cycles of ABVD therapy, chemotherapy, supported by the radiation therapy if needed. In limited stage patients, combined modality treatment consists of a brief chemotherapy followed by radiotherapy. Currently, two or three cycles of adrenamycin, bleomycin, midblastin, and tacarbazin followed by involved field of radiotherapy is considered standard of care for limited stage of Hodgkin lymphoma. The least toxic approach consists of two cycles of ABVD, followed by 20 radiation uh, appears to be sufficient for limited stage of Hodgkin lymphoma. For intermediate stage patients, is usually treated with combined modality approaches. Four cycles of ABVD chemotherapy followed by 30 red of radiation is widely considered standard for it. Uh, intermediate stage in patients over 60 years who are eligible for most intensive treatment. The standard is challenged by a protocol consisting of two cycles of gliomycin at opposite adriamycin, cyclophosphamide, liquidin, cristine, procarbazine, prednisolone in escalated dosage or bocop escalated uh, chemotherapy regimen followed by two cycles of ABVD regimen and certain rad rad of radiotherapy. In advanced stages is usually treated with chemotherapy alone. Additional uh, radiotherapy is confined to patients with residual disease after the chemotherapy. Patients over 60 years are treated with either six to eight cycles of ABVD followed by localized radiotherapy of residual lymphoma larger than 1.5 centimeters, or six cycles of BOCOP escalated followed by the localized radiotherapy of PET positive residual lymphoma larger than 2.5 centimeters. In patients uh, over than 60 years, the BOCOP regimen should be not given due to an increased rate of treatment related mortality in this stage group. 
Prolapse disease uh, includes patients uh, whose disease progresses during or within three months of initial multi-engine chemotherapy and those who relapse more than three months after uh, multi-engine chemotherapy. Uh, in this, if patient uh, has progression during or within three months of initial chemotherapy, they call it refractory lymphoma. If there is relapse uh, more than three months after multi-agent therapy, it's relapsed lymphoma. For relapsed lymphoma, controversially, two special uh, two special subgroups. The patient uh, who relapsed solely and originally embalmed but unradiated lymph nodes and without B symptom or external disease, who may obtain up to 50% cure rate with wide field for irradiation, and patient who relapsed without B symptoms more than one year after completion of primary chemotherapy, who may achieve up to 40% of cure rate with additional. Uh, chemotherapy with or without radiation. The most patient with refractory or relapsed uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, the treatment of choice consists of high dosage chemotherapy followed by autologist uh, stem cell transplantation. The use of antibody drug uh, conjugate butoximab uh, with the team presents an option in patients failing uh, first regimens of chemotherapy. Reduced intensity conditional allogeneic stem cell transplantation can be considered in young hemosensitive patient in good general condition who relapse after high dose chemotherapy. The dose of uh, force hazard radiation uh, is used and the high voltage radiotherapy techniques allow the treatment of all lymph node areas above or below the rung by single upper mantle or inverted blocks. Radiotherapy has uh, also a role of treatment of the bulky tumor masses such as medicinal tumor that remains after chemotherapy or painful skeletal model of soft tissues. In case of prolapse disease, higher dosage of chemotherapy followed by autologous stem cell transplantation. In, uh, if patients still have symptoms, uh, should be followed by brintuximab and tidine, and then reduce intensity conditional genetic stem cell transplantation is possible. During the first five to eight years after the end of the treatment, the patient mostly died from the Hodgkin lymphoma disease progression. Patient should be seen by hematologist, preferably about every three months for two years, then every six months for three years, then annually. Patient should be strongly encouraged to retain and sorry from smoking and to perform care from breast and skin examinations on a regular basis. To undergo the immunization for influenza annually for pneumococcus and diagnosis and five years after treatment and the tetanus every 10 years. Patients who have received radiation uh, to the head or neck area should follow the vigorous program of dental prophylaxis in anticipation of the deleterious effect of seduced cellular production and have their cellular stimulating hormone level checked annually in recognition of 50% risk for eventual hyperthyroidism after the treatment. On the PET scan you can see uh, this PET scan showing your labs, Hodgkin lymphoma with involvement of the cervical node mediastinal and mesenteric involvement. This PET scan represents significantly reduced lung nodules following the treatment of two courses of brintuximab. And here, after eight courses of brintuximab, uh, reveals persistent uptake of the contrast uh, despite the treatment is, was present. In assessing of the long-term 20-year results of treatment, uh, it has been established that during the first five to eight years of the end of the treatment, patient can die mostly of progression and uh, the leading cause of death of the patient are late complication of the treatment. Uh, uh, they are secondary tumor leukemias, myocardial infarction, uh, infection, serious damage to the 
lung tissue after intestinal radiation. I particularly want to combine with pleomycin. Uh, the most core cases of the Hodgkin lymphoma, the core cases are known, also genetic environmental or uh, infectious agent have been applicated. Several inherited disorders include the risk of developing non-Hodgkin lymphoma as much as 250 folds. Most cases cure uh, in patients who are 60 years of age and older. And the non-Hodgkin lymphoma occurs more frequently in men than in women. And uh, in advanced There is a case of advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma in the 32-year-old male patient with um, multiple lymph nodes and involvement. Here you can see fever and weight loss uh, in the presence of lymphadenopathy seen on the X-ray and liver and bone marrow involvement. Advanced stage uh, Hodgkin lymphoma uh, should be a, a risk of uh, uh, poor prognosis should be assessed and is based on the male and female uh, patient uh, uh, hemoglobin levels uh, more or less than 8.3 or seroalbumin leukocytes uh, high level more than 21 or leukocytes less than uh, 600 by millimeter. Uh, in the advanced stage of Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, the choice of initial treatment consists usually from BOCOP uh, strategy with further uh, radiotherapy if, if needed. And the normal treatment is anti PD1 monoclonal antibodies will further change the landscape of lymphoma. At least it's a promising therapy. Uh, when P1, uh, PD1 binds to the ligand, activated cells are enabled to produce an effective immune response against the tumor, and antibodies directed against the PD1 may improve an anti tumor immune response. Uh, Nivolumab is a polyhemoglobulin uh, G4 monoclonal PD1 blocking antibody, but deep embryo one is humanized human immunoglobulin G monoclonal PD1 blocking antibody immune therapy, not only in uh, uh, Hodgkin lymphoma, but in other neoplastic disorders, uh, showing the promising uh, actually future. And uh, still, uh, there are many clinical investigations uh, which help to establish the positive immunotherapy schemes with promising results and treatment of those diseases. Uh, Non-Hodgkin lymphoma encompasses solid tumors of lymphoma tissue, which are not Hodgkin lymphoma. Histological classification is complex, and there is a great clinical heterogeneity of uh, within the indolent or aggressive type of disease. The who classification divides lymphoma on the basis of B cell and T cell origin, and whether they are derived from primitive precocial cell or from more mature peripheral cells. Specific clinical and pathology quantities are recognized within each of these groups. B cell lymphoma make up about 85% of all cases of non Hodgkin lymphoma. There are more than 30 different subtypes of these lymphomas, and they are characterized according to the several prognostic factors, including size, growth rate, and anatomic site. Annual and size is around 10 cases on each 100,000 person. Usually it's middle age patient or the older patient, and more males are more affected than females. Classifying non Hodgkin lymphoma can be quite confusing because there are so many types and because several different systems have been used. The most recent system is the WHO classification, uh, which classifies lymphoma based on how they uh, look under the microscope, the chromosome features of lymphoma cells, and the presence of certain proteins on the surface cells. With development of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, usually associated with inherited immune disorders, 
acquire the immune disorders, and have some infectious agents, including Epstein virus, virus, hepatitis C virus, or widespread Helicobacter pylori, or Chlamydia psittaci, and occupational and environmental exposure, including herbicides, organic solvents, hair dyes, and even smoking. All lymphoid cells are derived from the common hematopoietic progenitors that give rise to lymphoid, myeloid, dendroid, monocyte, and megaparasite lineages. Through the ordered and uh, sequential activation of the series of transcription factors, the cell first becomes committed to the lymphoid lineage and then gives rise to B and T cells. About 90% of all lymphomas are the B cell origin and cell becomes committed to B cell development when it expresses the master B lineage transcription factor PEX5 which ultimately results in the transcriptional program that leads to the rearrangement of its immunoglobulin genes, which involves chromosomal recombination as well as somatic hypermutation to create an immunoglobulin gene that is unique to the bad cells. The sequence of the cellular uh, changes, including changes in cell surface phenotype that characterize normal B cell development. The most bacillal lymphomas arise following the process of immunoglobulin gene recombination and somatic hypermutation, which leads to, uh, to class switching and affinity maturation of the mature immunoglobulin, respectively, suggesting that it's the error prone nature of these genetic events that contributes to oncogenesis. Uh, uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma uh, Rappaport classification created include small and large cell lymphoma in the progressive and diffuse and non dilar follicular cells by the um, character of uh, the lymphoma. So, aggressive lymphomas have short natural history of disease uh, of rapid cellular proliferation and potentially curable with chemotherapy. Indolent lymphoma, which is usually a nodular or small cell, has long natural history, so patient can live for many years and treat it, uh, shows a slow cellular accumulation and generally incurable with chemotherapy. And this classification was uh, proposed by Rappaport in 1956. Lymphoid malignancy often retain the cell surface phenotype of the lymphoid cell as particular stages of differentiation. This information is uh, of little clinical and prognostic consequence. So-called stage differentiation of the malignant lymphoma does not predict its natural history. The antigen footprint or immunophenotype of the cell, however, is valuable diagnostically as it allows the distinguishing of the specific Hodgkin uh, subtypes. It can be detected by flow cytometry of single cell, suspicion from blood, bone marrow, or bloody fluid, or disaggregated tissue using fluorescent labeled antibodies against these agents, or by immunohistochemical staining of paraffin embedded tissue section with enzyme linked antibodies against these antigens, followed by the colorimetric reaction. So, according to the uh, WHO, uh, all lymphomas can be uh, divided into B and T lineages, and the initial B cells lineage contains more than 80 persons, and T lineage uh, with three types of uh, different lymphoma uh, contains uh, around 20% uh, of cases. Another presentation of the classification uh, by the whole of all lymphomas uh, uh, by division of T and B and Hodgkin lymphomas. Uh, non Hodgkin lymphoma can be divided into grades. The higher grade uh, is the, actually uh, easier to treat this lymphoma. So, low grade uh, uh, lymphomas include small lymphocytic, follicular, uh, mixed or small uh, cleaved cell lymphomas. Intermediate usually it's follicular large cell, diffuse small cleaved cell, diffuse mixed uh, and large cell, and diffuse, and diffuse large cell lymphomas, and high grade lymphoblastic, small, small cleaved cell, and large cell lymphomas. 
the easiest one work in classification divided into three categories by grade of tumor cells, differentiation, uh, and, and also can be divided into indolent, aggressive, and highly aggressive lymphomas. And, aggress and highly aggressive lymphoma must include uh, Burkitt lymphoma if, or B-lineage lymphomas and pre-T lymphoblastic uh, T-lineage lymphomas. The indolent lymphomas uh, are follicular, marginal zone, Cesare syndrome, and we call this fungenoid lymphomas. The most common presentation of non-Hodgkin lymphoma is cervical, axillary, or inguinal lymphadenopathy. In general, lymph nodes containing uh, lymphoma are firm, tender, and not associated with original uh, infection. Chest pain, cuffs, peregrine cava syndrome, abdominal pain, back pain, spinal cord compression, and symptoms of renal insufficiency associated with retrocompression, compression are characteristic of the mediastinum and retroperitoneum lymphadenopathy. Non-Hodgkin lymphomas are often associated with systemic symptoms uh, that may lead to the diagnosis. Uh, they can involve uh, essentially any organ of the body, and the malfunction of that organ can cause uh, symptoms that lead to the diagnosis. Many lymphomas involve the bone marrow and occasionally cause extensive uh, myeloftysis and the bone marrow failure. This patient may present with infection, bleeding, and anemia. Non-Hodgkin lymphoma can also manifest as a variety of immunological abnormalities, for example, autoimmune hemolytic anemia or immune thrombocytopenia. Sometimes they are also seen with POEMS syndrome, which includes polyneuropathy, organomegaly, endocrinopathy, and protein, and skin changes. Paraneoplastic neurological complication of non-Hodgkin lymphoma include demyelinization polyneuropathy, Guillain-Barre syndrome, autonomic dysfunction, and peripheral neuropathy. How to make diagnosis of the Hodgkin lymphoma? Regardless of the type of the lymphoid malignancy, the initial evaluation of the patient should include performance of the careful history and physical examination. These uh, will help confirm the diagnosis, identify those manifestations of the disease that might require prompt attention and aid of the selection of further study to uh, optimally characterize the patient's status to allow the best choice of the therapy. Uh, the most important step is the accurate pathological diagnosis and incisional or excisional lymphobiopsy is recommended to establish the diagnosis. Material can be obtained through aspiration, biopsy, final angle biopsy, open incisional biopsy, or open excisional biopsy. Comparing with the Hodgkin lymphoma, where aspiration and final angle biopsy uh, should not be used for making the pathomorphological diagnosis. The context of lymphoma diagnosis, uh, immunohistochemistry has an advantage that the cells of the interest are identified morphologically and it's applicable retrospectively to, uh, to fixed tissues. Through fixation may lead to the loss of some cell or cellular antigenesis. Flow cytometry allows a more precise definition of individual cell types since the cells of interest are identified by a combination of physical characteristics and the use of multiple antibodies directly conjugated with different fluorochromes. It also has the ability to assess monoclonality through detection of immunoglobulin halide chain expression, and the results can be available within a few hours after receiving or specimen. The board studies should include a complete blood count, routine chemistry, uh, liver functional test, and the serum protein electrophoresis to document the presence of circulating monoclonal paraproteins. The serum B2 microglobulin level and the serum of dehydrogenase are important independent prognostic factors for non Hodgkin lymphomas. Lymphoma histology and clinical presentation dictates which imagined status should be ordered. Chest abdominal and pelvic computer tomography scans are essential for accurate staging of. Uh, assessment of lymphadenopathy for indolent lymphomas, whereas positron emission therapy 
is useful for aggressive lymphomas, including epithelial lymphoma, blood elastic lymphoma, Burkitt lymphoma, and aggressive T cell non Hodgkin lymphomas. Radiological is the appearance of intrathoracic involvement. Is generally similar to the Hodgkin lymphoma's presentation. Pulmonary parenchyma involvement and administral lymphadenopathy are less common manifestation of these lymphomas than uh, in patients with Hodgkin type. Multiple nodules are the most common features, but poorly defined opacification within A bronchogram may also be seen. Futures are indistinguishable from changes such as bilateral airspace consolidation and segmental lobar telectasis are less common. Pleural involvement is characterized by nodular or plaque-like pleural deposits of lymphomatous tissue or the pleural effusion due to obstruction of the lymphatic pulmonary veins and thrice intact. Benign anterior medicinal masses are typically deposited on CT as well marginated, lobulated, encapsulated, mixed solid or cystic masses. Infiltrative involvement of the lymph spleen and marrow can be correctly detected with CT as organomegaly is poor predictor of tumor, of tumor involvement. CT is the imagined style of choice for evaluating when there are nastinal lesions. MRI is used as a problem-solving tool uh, in the margin of thoracic lymphoma and is generally not used as primary imaging modality, except for a few specific indications. MRI was particularly useful in evaluating cardiovascular abnormalities, has also been useful in evaluating uh, the response of the therapy in patients with lymphoma. On this slide, you can see the 55-year-old woman case with lower dorsal pain present. I note that the signal intensity changes in the body of the um, 12 thoracic vertebrae and there are associated with the right side at large paravertebral soft tissue mass and all the psoas muscle. Biopsy confirmed the patient has non Hodgkin lymphoma. PET scanning can be used to differentiate between fibrosis and viable tumor. Uh, the contrast accumulates in the viable tumor, but it does not accumulate in fibrotic or necrotic tissue. Uh, this scan uh, has been used for initial staging, restaging, and follow-up for the Hodgkin lymphoma cases. Because lymphoma and thyroid abnormalities may appear as anterior medicinal masses, these retinoclides may help to confirm or uh, eliminate thyroid tissue at the cause of the anterior medicinal mass. After diagnosis, a meticulous staging evaluation is necessary to estimate prognosis and to determine the therapy. Staging requires a careful history and physical examination, complete blood count, renal and hepatic function tests, serum lactate dehydrogenase level, CT of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and bone marrow biopsy. Repository emission tomography can be helpful to identify initial signs of involvement and after treatment is distinguishing persistent lymphoma from residual fibrosis in masses seen on CT. The most common stage in, uh, in uh, an herbal classification, in addition, each stage is divided into A, no defined general symptoms, and B, unexplained weight loss more than 10% of the body weight in the previous uh, six months, unexplained temperature more than 38% of cell, uh, degrees of Celsius or night sweets categories. A wide variety of patient factors and tumor factors can affect treatment outcomes. The International Prognostic Index is the most widely used method to predict treatment outcome and survival. This index is used based on the five adverse uh, factors, including older age, performance status less than two, evaluated LDH levels, uh, two or more external sites of disease involved, uh, and arbor stage 3 or 4, which are summed in to give the score and dependent on the score, the uh, category of patient will be seen and the therapy will be adjusted to these uh, categories of patient.
Follicular lymphoma is the most common of the inguinal non-Hodgkin lymphomas and the second most common form of the non-Hodgkin lymphomas or is defined as lymphoma of follicular B cells, uh, which has at least a partially follicular pattern. It's obviously positive for the B cell markers CD10, CD19, CD20, and CD22, but almost always negative for CD5. This is the most frequent form of the low grade lymphoma, mainly in women lymph nodes, usually widespread at the diagnosis. The histology is subdivided into three grades depending on the proportion of the small and large cells in the neoplastic follicles. The most common acquired in random chromosomal translocation in patient with follicular lymphoma is the translocation 14 to uh, 18, uh, which is found in more than 90% uh, of cases. The first step of follicular lymphoma in development uh, occurs uh, in the bone marrow as a mistake of rare arrangements and leads to the ectopic expression of anti apoptotic protein BCL2. After antigen counter name, the cells harboring the translocation of 14 to 18 reach the germinal center where they uh, display a selective growth advantages uh, and could extensively uh, recirculate in the typical immunoglobulin and post low affinity memory B cell called follicular lymphoma like cells. Iterative reentries into germinal centers allow. Uh, the acquisition of additional genetic alternation. Viruses have been implicated as etiological factors for lymphomas, including Epstein Barr, human T cell lymphocyte, lymphotrophic sorry, virus type 1, and adverse virus associated with Kaposhi sarcoma. Acquired immune deficiency may include infection with the human immune deficiency virus. Most lymphomas associated with uh, HIV are intermediate grade or high grade lymphomas. Follicular lymphoma are most commonly present in as a painless, slow progressive adenopathy. Systemic symptoms as fever, nuts with weight loss, or asthenia are infrequent at the presentation but can be observed in later stages of the disease. Uh, progression to an intermediate grade or high grade lymphoma should be considered when a patient develops systemic symptoms. The spleen and bone marrow are often involved, and the patient may present with primary skin, small intestinal tumor. Symptoms related to the bone marrow dysfunction, such as anemia, leukopenia, or thrombocytopenia, are rare at the presentation. The whole classification calls for grading of the follicular lymphoma from grades 1 3 based uh, on the number of centroblasts per high powered field. Uh, two variants of classical lymphomas is seen cutaneous follicular central lymphoma and diffuse follicular center lymphoma. Progression to diffuse large cell lymphoma occurs uh, up to 50% of patients depending on the duration of disease presence. Transformation to diffuse large cell lymphoma frequently is associated with the rapid progression of disease, including increasing of adenopathy, development of systemic symptoms, the infiltration of external sites. Progression to large cell lymphoma is a poor prognostic factor, and the most patients who experience transformations come to the disease. Burkitt lymphoma, named after Dennis Parkinson Burkitt, a surgeon who first described the disease in 1958 while working in Equatorial Africa. It's a solid, highly aggressive B cell tumor. The immune system uses lymphocytes to make antibodies. The genes for making antibodies are located on chromosomes 14, 2, and 22. These genes are expressed only in big lymphocytes because only them have necessary transcription factors for the, uh, the promoters and enhancers needed to turn these antibody genes on. The most of the cases of Burkitt lymphoma are reciprocal transplantation, has moved to, to proto-oncogene CA weak from uh, the normal position in chromosome 8 to location close to the enhancers of the antibody heavy chain genes on the chromosome 14. Uncontrolled mitosis of the cell results in a clone of the cancer cells of Burkitt lymphoma. According to the WHO classification, it can be divided into endemic, sporadic, and HIV-associated types 
of lymphomas uh, and endemic uh, mostly present in Africa, comparing with sporadic, which is usually represents uh, European and United States citizens, and HIV is widespread into the world wild. Uh, takes around 30% of cases compared with endemic ones, which is 90% of cases, uh, uh, and around 20% of each 100,000 patients. Orbic lymphoma is more common in children and immunosuppressed individuals. Widespread external involvement is common. Involvement of the bones uh, of the jaw is common for this form. Male are more frequently affected, both children and adults frequently have bulky abdominal disease, sometimes with involvement of the kidneys, ovaries, and breasts. One marrow more is seen in about one third of cases. Tumor may progress extremely rapidly, so therapy should be started as soon as possible. And tumor lies a simple may occur because of the frequent presence of bulky disease. The high rate of the tumor proliferation and the extreme sensitivity to the tumor to chemotherapy. Patients are well treated with specialized highly intensity short regimens, including the toximab, uh, which is a monoclonal antibody that sticks to proteins of the cancer cells and stimulates the immune system to attack the cancer cells. Uh, except uh, rituximab and also artillery cell cell transplantation with radiation therapy can be used. Peripheral T-cell lymphoma are neoplasm of post-tumic T-cells, and this includes relatively indolent disorders such as mucoid fluid and CD30 cutaneously for proliferating disorders. But most patients diagnosed with peripheral T-cell lymphoma have an aggressive neoplasm. Peripheral T-cell lymphomas represent 50% of all non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Mucosis fungenoids, also known as Albert Basin syndromes or granuloma fungenoids, is the most common form of cutaneous tissue lymphoma in the it's an indolent malignancy that is most common in the middle age or older adults. The clinical course is usually slow uh, with progression from isolated patches of plaque to sickness more widespread plaque and then to multiple cutaneous tumors that may ulcerate. The subset of the patient presents a generalized area of vitrodiagma and circulating tumor cells called Caesarean syndrome. On the lymph node and the visceral involvement may occur late in the course of the disease. Cutaneous radiation may be cured for the patient with limited patch of plaque disease. Patient with early stages of the disease are frequently treated with a skin direct therapy that may include ultraviolet radiation, topical steroids, and topical nitrogen mustard. Patients with the most severe uh, disease frequently benefit from the total scale electron beam therapy or extracorporeal photophoresis. The medical treatment includes interferon, alpha retinoids, monoclonal antibodies, and traditional cytotoxic therapeutic agents. However, these treatments are usually only palliative. Uh, on this picture, you can see in modular non Hodgkin lymphoma lesion in a patient with HIV syndrome. Uh, for the initial treatment of patient with intermediate or high-grade lymphomas in patient with bulky disease and in patient setting is recommended in order to monitor tumorizer syndrome and to manage uh, appropriately. Uh, in aggressive lymphoma cure is often the goal of the treatment, in the event, uh, rarely the goal, but control is the goal and approach dictated mainly by histology of lymphoma. Indolent stage 1 and contagious stage 2 in Hodgkin's lymphoma, symptom management consists of radiotherapy alone, and 40% of patients with limited stage disease remain uh, free for 10 years after radiation. Unreasonable and selected patients with first to second of stage of lymphoma who have unfavorable uh, prognostic factors. Uh, the disease course of indolent lymphoma is characterized by continuous decrease in the quality and duration of response, which 
uh, each subsequent treatment and treatment due to the acquisition of the chemotherapy resistance. Etuximab, a monoclonal target in CD12 antibody, uh, present in the uh, cell in combination with uh, uh, systemic chemotherapy and treatment uh, of symptomatic patients with indolent lymphoma should be the, focused on achieving the best possible quality of response without producing excessive toxicity. Single agent treatment with uh, chlorambucil or cyclophosphamide with or without prednisone is useful in elderly patients with significant comorbidities. Combination chemotherapy are used in younger patients with the goal of achieving a complete remission. The preferred treatment option for patients with intermediate grade of Hodgkin lymphomas is a combination of therapy plus and low to field uh, radiation therapy, rituximab uh, with standard doses of uh, combination chemotherapy should be considered for early patient with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, antologous or allogeneic bone stem cell transplantation following chemotherapy for patients with high risk of relapse should be uh, prescribed treatment of acute lymphoblastic lymphoma a very aggressive form of lymphoma is usually patterned after acute lymphoblastic leukemia therapy high dosage of chemotherapy plus stem cell transplantation is the treatment of choice for patients who have recurrent aggressive Lymphomas. Second line chemotherapy regimens such as ephosphamide, carboplatin, etoplatin, or dexamethasone, high dosage, dosage cytarabine, and cisplatin, or etoposidine, cysteine, doxorubicin, cyclophosphamide, prednisone are usually used to assay toximab if the tumor is CD12 positive. Patients who are not candidates for transplantation can be treated with chemotherapy with or without monoclonal antibodies. The treatment of T-cell lymphomas continues to be challenging. Typically, the cutaneous T-cell lymphomas are managed with topical agents and oral disease modifiers during the early stage of the disease. Surgery is useful in selected situations, particularly if the patient is localized or if risk of perforation, obstruction, and muscle bleeding is present. Uh, therapy response criteria consists from the data of physical examination, lymph nodes, lymph nodes, masses, tumors, and bone marrow investigation, and depending on uh, the response, uh, can be for types uh, of prolapse or progression, stable disease, uh, or partial response. Or complete response here, yeah, which called table disease. In complete response, uh, physical examination, lymph nodes, lymph nodes, masses, and bone marrow are normal. Uh, there is no abnormality seen in patient with partial response. Uh, lymph nodes uh, can or lymph node masses can decrease in the volume, but still present and bone marrow, marrow has relevant changes. Uh, in relapsed uh, or progressive types, there is enlargement of the spleen uh, and lymph nodes and reappearance of the malignant cells or malignant changes in the bone marrow. Radiation may be given in different ways, depends on the subtype uh, and type and stage of the cancer being treated. It can be with external radiation, with targeted radiation and monoclonal antibodies. In this case, I'm injecting into the blood and deliver radiation directly to the cancer cells. And the whole body radiation if person is getting a stem cell transplant. Tumor lysis syndrome refers to the constellation of metabolic disturbances that may follow the initiation of the cancer treatment. Rapid tumor cell turnover results in the release of intracellular components into the uh, circulation. It usually occurs in patients with bulky or rapidly proliferating treatment response to the tumors, most often seen in a 48 72 hours after initiation of the cancer treatment. Clinical the syndrome is characterized by a rapid development of hyperuricemia, hyperkalemia, hyperphosphatemia, hypoalcemia, and acute renal failure. Hyperkalemia and hyperphosphatemia result directly from rapid cell lysis. 
hypocalcemia is the consequence of acute hyperphosphatemia with subsequent precipitation of calcium phosphate and soft tissues. The main principles of tumor lysis syndrome management are identification of the high-risk patient with initiation of preventive therapy and early recognition of metabolic and renal complication and the prompt administration of supportive care, including hemodialysis. The Hodgkin lymphoma, how to divide them from non-Hodgkin clinically is, of course, very adjustable division, but can be helpful sometimes. So Hodgkin lymphoma generally involves contagious nerves. In non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, involvement usually are non-contagious. So different areas, especially in the lymphoma, it's usually too um, near um, uh, present or contagious nerves. Multiple myeloma is the plasma cell malignancy in which monoclonal plasma cells proliferate in the bone marrow, resulting in an overabundance of the monoclonal paraprotein destruction of bone and displacement of other hematopoietic cell lines. Closely described in the first half of the 19th century, and the part of the spectrum of disease ranging from monoclonal gamma, patio from non significant plasma cell leukemia. A multiple myeloma accounts for 10% of all hematological cancers. It's a heterogeneous disease with survival ranging from one year to more than 10 years. The precise etiology of multiple myeloma has not been established. Roles have been suggested for a variety of factors, including genetic causes, environmental or occupational causes, radiation, chronic inflammation, and infection. And genetic causes have been reported in two or more first degree relatives and in identical twins. I'm sorry. Also, no evidence suggested for hereditary basis of the disorder. Case control studies have suggested a significant risk of developing multiple myeloma in individuals with significant occupational exposures in agriculture, food, and uh, petrochemical industries. An increased risk has been reported in farmers, especially in those who use herbicides and insecticides, and in people exposed to benzene and other organic solvents. Monoclonal gammopathy undermined significance is defined by the presence of three criteria. Serum monoclonal and protein concentrations less than 3 gram by deciliter, bone marrow plasma cell concentration less than 10%, no evidence of end organ damage. This uh, smoldering multiple myeloma is seen in 2 or 3% of elderly Caucasian population. Development of multiple myeloma is commonly preceded by monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, a premalignant condition that results when plasma cells undergo mutation that restore their capacity for proliferation. Approximately half of the cases are hyperdeployed, usually with extra copies of uh, odd numbered chromosomes. Increasing evidence suggests that the bone marrow microenvolvement of the tumor cell play a pivotal role in the pathogenesis of myelomas. Interleukin 6 is also an important factor promoting the vitro growth of myeloma cells. Other cytokines are the tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1b. The Pathophysiological basis of, for the clinical sequelae of multiple myeloma involves the skeletal, hematological, renal, and nervous systems, as well as general process. Plasma cell proliferation causes extensive skeletal destruction with osteolytic lesions, anemia, and hypercalcemia. Mechanisms of hypercalcemia include bone involvement and possibly humoral mechanism. Isolated plasma Cytomas lead to hypercalcemia through production of the osteoclast activating factor. Destruction of the bone and its replacement by tumor may lead to pain, spinal cord compression, and pathological features. The mechanism of spinal cord compression symptom may be the, the development of epidural masses compression, a compression fracture of the vertebral body destroyed by multiple myeloma, or really an extradural mass. With pathological features, bone involvement is typically lytic in nature. 
Bone marrow infiltration by plasma cells results in neutropenia, anemia, and thrombocytopenia. M components may interact specifically with collagen factors leading to detective aggregation. The most common mechanism of renal injury in multiple myeloma are direct tubular injury and endosis or renal membrane plasma cytoma. Renal conditions that may be observed with, uh, include hyperglycemic nephropathy, hyperuricemia due to renal infiltration of plasma cells resulting in myeloma, light chain nephropathy, amyloid and glomerulosclerosis. Uh, multiple myeloma bone loss is due to the complex of interaction between a tumor and the bone marrow microenvironment leading to the both osteoblastic stimulation and inhibition of the osteoblastic function. This tumor induced uh, diffuse bone loss compounds for uh, the treatment of induced bone loss from frequent use of high dosage of glucocorticoid medication, typically dexamethasone, leading to severe osteoporosis. Much morbidity of multiple myeloma results from the insufficiency fractures from the profound bone loss seen in multiple myeloma. Dual mechanism of the bone loss in the present myeloma cells release rank gun stimulating osteoclast and discorp one, a protein that inhibits osteoblastic function and leads to loss of the osteoblastic differentiation and destruction of the osteoblast lineage stem cell, resulting uh, in lytic bone lesion that cannot heal. The nervous system may remove as a result of radiculopathy or uh, and cord compression due to nerve compression and skeletal destruction. General pathophysiological process include hyperviscosity syndrome. The syndrome is infrequent in multiple myeloma and occurs with overproduction of immunoglobulin G, first and third type, and immunoglobulin A. Sliding in the capillaries can result in purpura, erythema hemorrhage, papillary edema, coronary ischemia, and central nervous system symptoms. Cryoglobulinemia causes renal phenomena, thrombosis, and gangrene in the extremities. Presenting signs and symptoms of multiple myeloma includes bone pain, pathological fractures, weakness, anemia, infection, usually pneumococcal, hypercalcemia, spinal cord compression, and renal failure. In approximately 30% of cases, multiple myeloma is discovered through the routine blood screening when patients uh, are being evaluated for unrelated problems. In one sort of patients, this diagnosis uh, is made after pathological fracture cures. Such fractures commonly involve the axial skeleton. Two thirds of the patient complain of the bone pain, commonly with the lower back pain. This bone pain is frequently located at the back, long bone, skull, and pelvis. Bone pain is the most common presenting symptom in the multiple myeloma. Most case uh, series report that 70% of patients have both bone pain and presentation. The lumbar spine is one of the most common sites of pain. The symptoms that should alert physicians to consider spinal cord compression are back pain, weakness, numbness, or dysesthesia in the extremities. Occasionally, the patient may come to medical attention from bleeding resulting from thrombocytopenia. Rarely, monoclonal protein may, may absorb causing factors and lead to bleeding. Confusion, somnolence, bone pain, constipation, nausea, and thirst are the presenting symptoms of hyperglycemia. Abnormal humoral immunity and leukopenia may lead to infection, uh, usually it's pneumococcal. Hyperviscosity may be associated with a number of symptoms, including general malaise, infection, fever, paresthesia, sludge mentation, and sensory loss. People may report headaches and somnolence, and they may bruise easily and have hazy vision. Carpal tunnel syndrome in common complication, anemia, which may be quite severe in patients with uh, multiple myeloma, also present. During physical examination, the eye may show indica indicating macular detachment, renal hemorrhage, and undergotten wall spots. Failure from the anemia may be present, chemosis or purpura due to thrombocytopenia may be evident. Uh, bone knee tendon, tenderness is the common cause resulting from the focal lytic destructive bone lesions and pathological fracture. Pain without tenderness is typical. Pathological fear fractures may be observed.
Neurology profile is including the sensory level change, neuropathy, myopathy, tinal sign, and pollen sign due to carpal tunnel compression, secondary to amyloid deposition. Extramenary plasma cytoma, which consists of the soft tissue masses of plasma cells, are not common. Plasma cytoma have been described in almost every site of the body. On evaluation of the abdomen, hepatosplenomegaly may be discovered. Cardiovascular examination may reveal cardiomegaly secondary to immunoglobulin deposition. In amyloidosis may develop in some patients. The characteristic of physical examination findings that suggest amyloidosis include the following. Shoulder pet sign, macroglossia, typical skin lesions, post postoscopic uh, periparebral purpura. The shoulder pad sign is defined by the lateral swelling of the shoulder joints secondary to amyloid deposition. Uh, physicians describe the swelling as hard and rubbery. Amyloidosis also may be associated with carpal tunnel syndrome and subcutaneal nodules. The initial diagnostic workup in all patients should uh, include a history and physical examination that to differentiate symptomatic and asymptomatic multiple myeloma. The following baseline laboratory studies are needed CBC with differential and platelet counts, examination of peripheral smear, blood urea nitrogen, serum creatinine, creatinine clearance, uh, electrolyte levels, liver function test, serum calcium, albumin level dehydrogenase and beta-2 microglobulin levels. The diagnosis required 10% of the closing bone marrow plasma cells or biopsy proven plasma cytoma plus evidence of one or more multiple myeloma defined events, namely CRAB. CRAB includes hypercalcemia, renal failure, anemia, or lytic bone lesions uh, that related to the plasma cell disorder, bone marrow clonal bone hemocytosis more than 60%, serum involved and involved free uh, light chain ratio more than 100, or more than one for collision on magnetic resonance imaging. Serum analysis includes quantity immunoglobulin levels, serum protein electrophoresis, and serum immunofixation electrophoresis to obtain the more specific information about the type of the end protein present. Assisting changes in the level of various proteins, particularly the M protein, helps track uh, disease progression and response to treatment. Urine analysis as a part of the initial diagnostic workup includes evaluating 24-hour urine for total protein, urine protein electrophoresis, and urine immunofixation electrophoresis. The serum free chain uh, say along with the serum analysis uh, yields have sensitivity while screening the uh, disorder and related plasma cell disorders. It's also helpful in prognostication of the monoclonal gamma patio of undetermined significance. A smoldering myeloma, active multiple myeloma, immunoglobulin light chain and overdoses, and solitary plasma cytoma. The serum uh, light chain analysis uh, assay also follows uh, or allow the quantity of monitoring of patients uh, with light chain amyloidosis and light chain myeloma. Suppression of non myelomatous immunoglobulin is a minor disease criteria for multiple myeloma and the level of MM protein as documented by the immunoglobulin level can be useful in the market to assess the response to therapy. Beta-2 microglobulin is a surrogate marker of the overall body tumor burden, and the level of its uh, parameters increased in patients with unknown sufficiency without multiple myeloma, which is one reason that it is useful uh, prognostificator in multiple myeloma. C-reactive protein is a surrogate marker of interleukin-6 activity, and this interleukin is often referred as plasma cell growth factor. Like beta-2 microglobulin, CRP is useful for prognostication. Check the serum is coded in patients with central nervous system symptoms, no nosebleeds, or very high in protein levels. These findings may include hyperviscosity symptoms. The normal reference ranges for serum viscosity are 1.4 till 1.8 cm poises, and symptoms are usually anatomical seen before the viscosity reaches 4 centipoises and the patient uh, with uh, HIVS usually presents with the serum viscosity greater than 5 centipoises. 
The percentage of the clonal uh, bone marrow plasma cells is the major criterion for the diagnosis of the multiple myeloma, it should be more than 10%. The percentage uh, is estimated by the unilateral bone marrow aspiration and biopsy. Immunohistochemistry or the flow cytometry can be used to confirm the presence of one coronal plasma cells and to more accurately quantify plasma cells involvement. Uh, the set plasma of the normal uh, abnormal plasma cells contain five kappa, two lambda light chains, and predominance of one of the more light chain expressive plasma cells indicate clonality. Obtain bone marrow spray and the biopsy samples from the patient to calculate the percentage of plasma cells in the aspirate and to look for sheets of clusters of plasma cells in the biopsy specimen. Bone marrow biopsy enables a um, more accurate evaluation of one missing than does bone marrow aspiration. Uh, histological findings include the plasma cells uh, that are two or three times larger than typical lymphocytes. They have a centric nuclei that are smooth in contour with clumped chromatin and have perinocranial hollow or pale zone. The cytoplasm is basophilic. Many um, multiple myeloma cells have characteristic but not diagnostic cytoplasmic inclusion, usually containing immunoglobulin. The variants include most cells, the Russell body, grape cells, and the bureau moral cells. Bone marrow examination includes plasma cell infiltration often in sheets or clumps. The infiltration is different from the usual plasma site infiltration observed by the patient who is white from microglobulinemia. Also, multiple myeloma may be morphologically similar. Several subtypes of the disease have been identified at the genetic and molecular level. Bone marrow studies and the initial diagnosis should include chromosome analysis by fluorescence and situ hybridization performed on the plasma cell obtained from the bone marrow aspiration. Uh, metaphase epigenetics may provide additional information. Specific chromosomal abnormalities have been identified in the patient with multiple myeloma, include involving translocation, deletion, or amplification. Deletion of 17 to uh, shoulder of 13 leads to the loss of heterogen zygonic T and considered the higher risk of future multiple myeloma. High proportion of myeloma cells with the abnormality of, as well as mutation of the remaining allele significantly enhance the risk. As a high risk chromosomal aberration are characterized by structural changes that include specific rearrangements and all the uh, encoding immunoglobulin heavy chain gene located at the 14 chromosome. Uh, several subgroups of patients are identified on the basis of translocation from 14 to 32. Simple radiography is indicated for the evaluation of the skeletal lesions, such as skeletal surveys is performed when myeloma is in the differential diagnosis. Plain radiography remains the gold standard imaging procedures for staging newly diagnosed and relapsed myeloma according to the International Myeloma Working Group Consensus Statement. Perform complete skeletal service and diagnosis of multiple myeloma, including the skull, where the most common site of the bone lesions and the long bones, to look for impendent fractures and the spine. Magnetic resonance imaging is useful for detecting thoracic and lumbar spinal lesions, paraspinal movement, and early cord compression. Findings from MRI studies of the vertebra are often positive and plain radiographs are not. MRI can be perceived as many as 40% of spinal abnormalities in patients with asymptomatic gamma patches and whom radiographic status are normal. For this reason, evaluation symptomatic patients with MRI to obtain a clear view of the spinal cord and to assess the integrity of the spinal cord. Whole body CT was positive in 25.5 of patients with negative skeletal survey. For the transmission tomography have been shown to identify more lesions than plain X-ray and detect lesions in the patient with negative skeletal surveys. It's important to note that this imaging study is chosen instead of the whole body lower dose CT. The imaging quality of the CT part of the patch should be equivalent 
to the whole body low dosage of CT. Usually the CT part is used for initiation correction, which may not be sufficient to set bone disease due to multiple myeloma and stability of the spine. The whole uh, body part uh, was uh, imagining it useful in detecting of extramedular disease outside of the spine. Initial diagnostic workup patient suspected of multiple myeloma having uh, recommends either whole dose uh, low CT or uh, positron vision tomography. The panel has also noted that the skeletal survey including long bones is acceptable where uh, advanced uh, imaging is not available. CT contrast agents are not necessary for detection of myeloma bone disease and should be generally avoided for patients with myeloma whenever possible. In the case of the spinal cord compression, uh, an urgent MRI of CT is obligatory in order to assess the bad management. In the suspicion of the platinum cytoma of CT or the area admitted biopsy is needed, the case of the myeloma of low dose computer tomography may reveal an athletic lesion. If athletic lesions are present, when the patient fulfills the criteria of symptomatic disease and needs symptomatic therapy. If not, when uh, MRI has to be performed and in presence of the more than one focal lesion MRI, the treating physician should treat the patient as having symptomatic myeloma. To data to not justify the initiation of treatment of a symptomatic patient with diffuse MRI pattern of moral involvement. Staging is cumulative evaluation of the all diagnostic information granted uh, and is useful tool for us to stratify the patient with severity disease. Currently, two staging systems for the multiple myeloma are in use. Uh, Salmon Dury system on the left part of the slide, which has been widely used in since 1975, and international staging system on the right side of the slide, developed by the uh, International Myeloma Working Group for the 19th. 2005. The revision uh, of the system is published in 2015 according to the level of points uh, during the calculation of the system. Patient can be stratified and treatment should be prescribed. Physician must understand both the natural history of the multiple myeloma and the limitation of current therapy in the treatment of the disease. The objective in the therapy is to obtain the deepest response in the first round by choosing the appropriate regimen. This should lead to better overall survival in both transplant and non-transplant patients. Also, multiple myeloma remains uncurable. Several drug therapies available in the treatment of the patients as uh, are auxiliary stem cell transplantation, radiation, and surgical care in certain cases. For primary induction therapy, the patients should, uh, who are candidate for transplantation uh, should be for this patient recommended the following combination of preferred regimens. Bortezomib, lenalidomib, dexamethasone, bortezomib, cyclophosphamide, dexamethasone. Other recommended regimen uh, uh, is false, uh, perfusomib. Linalidomib, dexamethasone, ixodomib, linalidomib, dexamethasone. Uh, National Cancer Network considers the following regimen useful in certain circumstances. Uh, so, the triplet regimen should be used in the standard. Patient must consider it candidates for certain drug regime and can be started on the two drug regime and with the third drug and it once performs. A month status will be proved. Patient should be assessed for response after two cycles of one or more regimen presented on the slide. And patient who are treated with uh, lindalidomid or talidomid uh, are at significant increased risk for thrombotic events, and many physicians incorporate anticoagulant strategies in their management. As monotherapy or in combination, I took on IPA and prednisone, mostly for long disease free survival. Injunctive therapy uh, includes radiation therapy target areas of pain, impeding pathological fractures, and existing pathological fra uh, fractures. 
In patients with symptomatic multiple myeloma, chemotherapy is required. In asymptomatic patients, treatment is delayed until the disease clinically progresses or until serum or urine levels of M proteins have substantially increased. The M component level in serum or urine is an indicator of the tumor burden. This reduction after chemotherapy is used as a sign of response. The first positive percent reduction of M component is considered a good clinical response. The first step before starting therapy is to determine whether the patient is a candidate for atelogous stem cell transplant. Legibility depends on primarily on the patient's age and comorbidities. Typically, at age 65, it uses as a cutoff point for transplant eligibility. Thus, statement for multiple myeloma is the best look in the terms of the following three categories of patients. Young, newly diagnosed patients, high-risk patients who are potential transplant candidates, and newly diagnosed elderly patients who are not transplant candidates. Conventionally, what regimen includes gamocristine, enoxirubicin, and dexorubinol chemotherapy uh, have been used to decrease the tumor burden. Multiple myeloma is preparation for transplantation. It's administered as four day continuous intravenous infusion uh, with increased immunity of cerebicin and with four day oral dosages of dexamethasone. Newly di diagnosed, early patients who are not transplant candidates should be treated with regimen typically consists of uh, uh, milfalan milligrams square meter and prednisone 100 milligrams given. Day one to four, with courses repeated uh, at four and six week intervals at least one year. In spite of advances in treatment, multiple myeloma remains an incurable disease. To improve overall survival in these patients, a number of trials have evaluated the role of maintenance therapy in both transplantant eligible and transplantant ineligible patients. Right analysis shows that the benefit of maintenance. Uh, Analidomic modulation of substrate specify the cases. Subsequent protosomal degradation of these encryption factors kills uh, multiple myeloma cells with 51 reduction of the risk of cures. This benefit outweighs the risk uh, seen in the trials with analidomic uh, maintenance. Patients who have relapsed after initial disease control may be treated with any of the agents not already uh, utilized. Uh, if the relapse occurs longer than six months after the initial therapy, when the initial regimen can be used again. Triplet regimens are the standard, but the patients who are considered unable to tolerate three drugs can be started from true drugs regimen with a third drug and at once their performance status improves. Uh, Alterferon uh, interferon alpha therapy does not appear to be effective for uh, in induced remission, and randomized control trials show that the patient do not benefit from uh, addition of interferon to mefalan and prednisol. Uh, interferon alpha does not uh, does appear to prolong remission in select patients. Uh, for this use, it may be administered after conventional chemotherapy or bone marrow transplantation has been completed. Uh, myeloma is extremely sensitive to radiation. Physicians use radiation to treat symptomatic lesion and to stabilize bone at the risk of the fracture. Physicians also use radiation to treat spinal cord compression. Low dose double hemibody radiation has been studied as symptomatic therapy for refractory and relapsed multiple myeloma with, uh, but without dramatic success. If pain is mild and it for less than 50% of bones involved, the course of radiation can be initiated. Radiation treatment can result in additional early bone loss due to the inflammation and weight bearing should be limited for the first four to six weeks. Bisphosphonates uh, are specific inhibitors of osteoclastic activity and are used to treat bone resorption. They have a role of secondary prevention of the bone complications, including hypercalcemia, pathological fracture, and spinal cord compressions. Intravenous pomidronate has been shown to be effective in preventing skeletal complication. Zledronic acid may be significantly more potent than pomidronate. 
and Jenna Zumab in January 2018 was approved by FDA for prevention of skeletal related events in patients with multiple myeloma. Uh, Jenna Zumab is a human antibody targeting the binding to receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand. Osteoclast active factors uh, are implicated as an increased risk uh, for relapse of the patient with multiple myeloma. To treat pathological fractures, physicians should orthopedically stabilize and irradiate this lesion. Uh, patients who may have uh, spinal cord compression need a rapid irradiation, which may necessitate urgent transfer to the center equipped to the MRI for diagnosis or center with radiation oncologist for urgent therapy. Patients with spinal cord compression should begin corticosteroid therapy immediately to reduce swelling. Erythropoietin may ameliorate anemia resulting from either multiple myeloma alone or uh, from chemotherapy and has been shown to improve quality of life. Echinorenal impairment related to multiple myeloma is typically managed with plasma phoresis to rapidly lower circulating uh, normal proteins. Pain is a considerable problem for many patients with multiple myeloma regarding bone disease, the use of bifosphonates along with them anti-myeloma therapy, radiation or balan kephoplasty is a specific indication and may control the pain of the patient. The treating physician should take into account that in several patients, pain and especially back pain may be due to other reasons and not to myeloma itself. Paracetamol can be administered at dose up to one gram four times a day for the control of the mild pain. In general, non-steroidal uh, anti-inflammatory drugs should be avoided in multiple myeloma. Oral tramadol codeine can be given to control the mild moderate pain in cases of the chronic moderate to severe pain, fentanyl or uh, buprenorphine uh, patches or uh, oxycodone are recommended. For severe pain, neuros block and steady drugs can be performed, while a neuroprotective block using chemicals, heat and freezing may produce long-acting blockade with a pain relief for weeks, months and indefinitely. For the management of acute severe pain, subcutaneous opioids can be used for the rapid relief of the symptoms. Patient and opioids should be uh, also given laxatives. So this is the end of this lecture. Thank you for your attention. As usual, you can post your questions or under this lecture on our Facebook or, or YouTube channel or send me to my private email and I will respond for you. Have a nice day and goodbye.